The coronavirus pandemic continues to cost the global economy trillions in lost incomes across all sectors as well as stock markets. So just how much money will it cost us? Early forecasts from Bloomberg pegged an estimate at at least $2.7 trillion. But uh, that was before the coronavirus was declared a global pandemic. For now, no fresh estimate of the economic losses has been churned out as the battle against the virus remains uncertain. In this report, David Alabi analyzes what short and medium term measures both government and private sector ought to explore as analysts speculate on what happens next if the pandemic lasts longer than expected in Nigeria. The coronavirus pandemic still ravages on and no economy is spared the impact. It is very likely that this year the global economy will experience its worst recession since the Great Depression, surpassing that seen during the global financial crisis a decade ago. This echoes the fears of world leaders, especially for emerging economies. In response to this, there have been big shifts in global stock markets as well. The FTSE, Dow Jones Industrial Average and the Nikkei have all seen huge falls since the outbreak began. Central banks in many countries, including the United Kingdom, Nigeria, China and the USA have all slashed interest rates as measures to stem the tide. For Nigeria, dwindling oil prices as a result of the virus and the impact on the demand has hit home harder, with an immediate revision of the 2020 budget and key assumptions. Increase in interventions by the Central Bank of Nigeria and other stimulus measures by the nation's economic teams, but that's not enough. The rapid change in sentiment is not surprising. Building fiscal buffers is most strategic at this point. The International Monetary Fund's revamped catastrophic containment and relief trust worth over $11.7 billion as one of the biggest interventions with an immediate debt service relief to 25 of the world's poorest countries. We do need everybody to chip in so we can prevent a risk of, of uh, unnecessary um, insolvencies either at the level of uh, private sector uh, or when we talk about the capacity of governments uh, to stay strong. Just like Nigeria's borrowing plan, borrowings are the next resort for many developing countries after internal contributions by the private sector. With a global recession forecast and revenue generation not at optimal levels, the Nigerian economy needs to tread carefully. At this point, what government needs to do is to, one, be realistic about what is it that we can collect, both from oil revenue and non-oil revenue, custom receipts, uh, other income, including uh, the money you can get from government agencies. You be realistic about that, revise your expectation of how much uh, the target you set for the various agencies. But I think the immediate win where government can get the fiscal buffers, uh, it might be, be the MDAs. Global unemployment rates raise new fears as it is forecast to hit about 16% as companies are preparing for a longer recovery, which is forcing difficult decisions around staffing. A turnaround in policies towards stimulus and manufacturing, transportation, oil and gas, tourism is a natural cause of action. For many countries, food sufficiency is the next worry. Ensuring food supply chain for the most vulnerable populations will cost about $100 million. For Nigeria, the need to stabilize food markets and also prevent massive food shortages cannot be overemphasized. At least every local government or within every territorial zone has to have a storage for grain or for vegetables in cold wet people. People can bring in their poultry or vegetables and from there the logistics can move. So government has to look at transport logistics now, storage and preservation. We really need that. The tools for economic recovery available to governments during this global economic meltdown are national, not international. So for the Nigerian government, it's time to think and act beyond the conventional policy measures. David Alabi, TVC News, Lagos.